I will leave the floor to Jean-Marc. Okay, thank you, Grazia, and thank you to everybody. <clears throat> Um, so CIVIS, uh, as you know, is an uh, alliance uh, of uh, 11 universities with a, uh, well, uh, a, a strong focus on what, the, what are the um, university um, missions. And also, uh, this uh, is linked strategically to um, Africa. And uh, we'll, we'll, I'll come back on that later. So on the next slide, just a very brief history. Um, so the story uh, began in 2017 with the uh, speech from uh, Emmanuel Macron. Then the commission took over, launched a call with an, a number of uh, objective goals. Uh, long-term collaboration open to all academic missions, so including research, uh, creating inter-university campuses, uh, promoting inclusiveness, innovative pedagogy, multilingualism, multiculturalism. Uh, CIVIS was among the 17 first uh, university alliance to be selected, <clears throat> and then two other calls brought another 34 uh, alliance. So uh, today we have 50 alliance and the U, uh, university, um, uh, the um, commission objective is, is to have uh, 60 uh, alliance. So a, a call uh, is, 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 um, is, has been launched for that. Um, so here are the uh, 11 uh, European University that you uh, probably all know. I won't. I will not go through uh, all these. And on the next slide, we have uh, the uh, six um, strategic uh, university uh, in Africa uh, with which we want to develop a specific partnerships. So as you can see, they are uh, rather well distributed uh, among the continent. Um, CIVIS is a university alliance which share a number of uh, objectives uh, which are with all the other alliance which are common to all the other, uh, other alliance. So long-term collaboration, openness to academic missions, inter-university campuses, promoting inclusiveness, what the, the the compulsory items that I mentioned before. And uh, we also have a number of uh, rather specific uh, feature, <clears throat> civic engagement, uh, the societal challenge uh, oriented <clears throat> in the academic mission, and that bridge to Africa and the Mediterranean region, which is something which makes uh, CIVIS very well identified at the level, at the European level and uh, in the Commission. A few numbers, <clears throat> half a million of students make CIVIS uh, the uh, largest uh, university alliance among the 50 existing one at the moment, and uh, another one. And you see that uh, from the perspective of research, which is what we are talking about today, it, it is rather a, a strong alliance uh, also. Um, so, CIVIS display a number of opportunities uh, for students, for academic, for staff. And today we are going to talk about uh, opportunities for academic in, in the, in the uh, domain of uh, research. Um, CIVIS also display many collaborative spaces. And I will just today focus on hubs and open labs. But you see that there are many others, and uh, this, well, is not on the on, on the topic of today, but uh, many possibilities. Um, about hubs, it, it is important because uh, CIVIS is organized uh, uh, around five hubs. Um, and in fact, the academic expertise in CIVIS are in the Hub Council. So every time we will have to, we will have calls and things like that. They will go through the different uh, Hub Council because the expertise is there. And so, as you can see, uh, the um, different hub are led by uh, a couple of university each time. <clears throat> And uh, the uh, the uh, different topic of uh, 
uh, research and uh, and uh, education are uh, distributed among these apps. And lastly, um, what is uh, uh, also something important in CIVIS is open labs. Are open labs so open labs <clears throat> as 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 their name suggests are uh, places where the university uh, open to uh, his uh, its uh, surrounding uh, social surrounding economic surrounding political surrounding and uh, that, that that's a place where it's possible to build projects involving uh, association companies um, a city and students <clears throat> And so far, uh, we, we have achieved uh, 41 projects, uh, two thirds including service learning, with, with, with a, a fair number of uh, stakeholders involved. And this is something that uh, we want to develop. And it's uh, an important aspect of uh, what we can do in, in terms of uh, civic engagement. I think that's all for me, and I mm -hmm. so leave the floor to Chris to okay. enter a bit more deeply in the subject of today. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Jean-Marc. And just uh, before I leave the floor to Chris Pierce, I'm sorry because I started too too quickly and just uh, forgot to remind to all the participants, I'm very happy because we have, we have more than 70 people already uh, connected with us, that this session will be, is recorded. So it will be available online in our website later on as well as the all the slides of the presentation, as well as later the question and answer that we will gather to uh, would be trans would be spread and uh, sent to you by email uh, and available on the media. So just to make sure that you want to, you don't need to write down to take notes. Please, uh, Professor Pierce. Thank you and uh, hello everybody. So um, just just a, um, a couple of slides here on on uh, more specifically about research. So as as it as as you can see here and as you know, Civis has had a board remit that has had and will continue to have a major focus on joint educational activities. But promoting joint research is also an important and complementary objective of Civis. Um, the RIS for Civis um, uh, was a three year project. Um, that developed the research and innovation strategy for CIVIS and it explored how to strengthen research collaboration across national borders, between our institutions and of course across disciplines. Now, although um, RIS for CIVIS has formally ended, um, it has provided a very strong foundation for joint research that we are now taking forward um, through the leadership of the newly formed Civis Research Council that I am chairing, as well as through the existing Civis um, bodies and platforms uh, that we have. So, um, so currently um, we have research um, uh, orientated education and training. Um, we have network support through, particularly through our hubs and through our contact network. And very importantly, we have an expert group that provides funding information and advice. So that's where we are at the moment, but now we're moving to um, the next stage, which is launching this new seed funding scheme to really extend the great work that we did in the RIS for Civis um, and strengthen those research collaborations across the entire alliance. So the uh, so to to take research in civis to that next stage, the seed funding call is uh, a key um, a key action that we're taking, and has some specific objectives that are listed down the bottom here. So they are it is designed to stimulate bottom up research oriented initiatives across the civis universities in our hub thematic areas, and you saw earlier um, those those hubs and and what they do. Uh, it is also there to contribute to sustainable academic networks through support for grant proposal development. So this really is just seed funding. It is really just to establish um, uh, those activities. Um, but in order for them to be sustainable, we need to use that seed funding to go after uh, grant proposals. 
Um, it's also, though, a key point is looking to the future and recognizing that we need to support and develop our early career academics. So really creating opportunities for those is another objective for the seed funding, um, whether that be um, uh, at postdoc level or, or um, at doctoral level. And then the final objective is to continue um, the work of Viz for Civis um, and stimulate citizen science and participatory research as a, as a key focus for us as, a, as, a, as, a, as an alliance. So that's where we are. And I think I'm going to pass over to Christian now to tell us, tell you a little bit more about the details of the scheme. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Hello. Yes. Good morning. Uh, Christian Merman, my name. Um, next slide, please, Gratia. Can you forward? Uh, I can do that here myself. Oh, can I do that? No, probably not. Right. Gratia, sorry. Next slide, please. Gratia, thank you. Um, as Jean-Marc has said, Civis has as a special feature strategic partnerships with uh, six uh, distinguished African universities. And uh, you have seen the list and uh, most of you or many of you actually come from these universities and uh, we're very proud um, to have these partnerships since 2022 when we signed uh, an official partnership agreement. Um, the partners uh, agreed uh, together with Civis to pursue these main objectives. Uh, together, we want to actually better address global societal challenges. And as the uh, name says here, global means that we cannot really uh, have a European perspective on those uh, challenges only, but really make, need to make sure that we include non-European perspectives. Uh, and uh, together with our commitment to collaboration with Africa, we have established and invited uh, uh, these uh, partners to these partnerships. We, of course, also want to contribute to our university's internationalization strategies uh, by also making civis and also these partners more visible yeah, as uh, international uh, internationally oriented universities and institutions we want to increase mobility, but also with an eye uh, to, you know, the ecological dimension and, and the financial constraints, etc., with a focus on promoting also virtual mobility as an important future-oriented component of mobility in academia. But of course, and this is also key here, uh, the partners agreed uh, that we really want to promote joint research and research-oriented training. So this... Um, uh, seed funding call really speaks to that objective. Uh, we currently work together in hubs, in the five thematic hubs you have been introduced to earlier. We also work together in the civil governance, so our African partners uh, you know, meet and join the steering committee and the board of directors of CIVIS, so really to ensure that this is real cooperation on eye level um, and that everyone sits at the table. Yeah? when things are decided. But of course, we have also a well-working uh, management level cooperation uh, in an institutional contact group. Currently, we are busy with designing joint educational offers, and that includes uh, also short-term educational offers, but also study programs. And this is really a mid to long-term project, but uh, yeah, we really, uh, you know, pursue this objective to include African partners in really our educational office in CIVIS. We also have a mobility program in place uh, where we, why we want to actually support people from, and academics also from our partner universities to come to Europe, but also to, um, yeah, support CIVIS academics in Europe to visit your um, universities in Africa come from such university. But of, of course, we've also been successful in launching joint projects. And uh, just to mention here one, we have uh, last year um, started the Jean Monnet Network Poly Civis, which is uh, involving all civis members in Europe, in Africa, uh, and a few further uh, African universities. And it's uh, research and education and outreach on the poly crisis in European African Perspectives. Check out the website. Very interesting uh, things are done in that project. Next slide, please. In 2022, we already launched actually a seed funding call for uh, inclusive projects with our African partners. 
and uh, 13 activities were supported through that call and we received very positive feedback and actually also the strong recommendation from the academics involved in those projects. Please continue a mechanism like that. And voila, here we are. And so the call objectives in relation not to research particularly, but also in uh, regard of our partnerships are really to support further the network creation uh, between civic universities in Africa and Europe, but or consolidate already existing contacts. But uh, we also, as I said earlier, want to really contribute to the research and research-oriented training dimension, which has been um, uh, yeah, decided to be a priority in our partnership. But, and this is also important, uh, we want to indeed support third-party funding acquisition in what is really a very dynamic funding landscape. Uh, and this is a very good moment in time, let's say, to really uh, push uh, joint um, third-party funding proposals because, as you know, probably the EU is heavily investing in African-European collaboration, uh, just uh, refer to the Africa Initiative in Horizon, uh, but also the African Union, the European Union launched the Innovation Agenda, which um, is really also promoting a science collaboration between the, our continents. Next slide, please. I don't go into detail here, but these are a few projects out of the 13 we have funded in 2022. And this should just give you an idea of uh, what it's, what's possible in terms of activity. So you might want to actually look at the last column here um, because the, 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 the funding involved was similar to what we actually offer here now. Yeah. So for instance, the project Transatlantic Dialogue organized a round table and workshop uh, out of which uh, emerged then an application for research conference conducted last year. Uh, the project Cultural Heritage and Global Epistemologies uh, held two colloquia and a workshop in Casablanca at UH2C. Um, the project Recent Emerging Ultrasound Technology uh, managed to include WITS in a summer school and uh, organize a network meeting with this uh, funding we provided. And uh, AfriConnect, um, that's an, a capacity building project uh, funded by Erasmus Plus, it managed this call to reach out to Casablanca and Dakar, for instance. And so this little you know, seed funding we provided uh, contribute significantly to the a stronger uh, project proposal here. Next slide, please. But now moving on to the call itself and what you can actually gain from it. And uh, we start with who can apply. And this, of course, is also shown on our website, which you probably know already, but we want to actually elaborate on these points mentioned there. It's for permanent faculty members and employees with a long-term contract. And long-term just means that we want to make sure that the applicant uh, or the applicants are there actually also after the activity has taken place just for, you know, it's seed funding and there should be a more lasting collaboration um, uh, after uh, 2025 when these activities have ended. So the employee should be there after 2025, basically, yeah, and, and to sustain the network and the contacts. Postdocs are explicitly encouraged to apply here, yeah, and also there's no limit uh, in terms of the, the period uh, after the uh, PhD thesis. Uh, so, you know, go for it. Uh, if you have a convincing idea, if you have partners, and if you have, uh, you know, a clear idea of what you want to do, uh, we encourage you to apply for this call. For organizational reasons only, the main contact for this call needs to come from a European civil university. Uh, we have a very complicated budget. Uh, you know, we don't want to bother you with details, but it's for basically for communication purposes that we require uh, a main contact person from a European university, which costs are eligible. Um, and you have probably seen it. Basically, you can meet and travel with the grant you receive because we will pay for staff mobility costs within Europe, but uh, also from Europe to Africa. This is fully covered. We also support staff mobility from Africa to Europe, although for some European university destinations only. Um, this has budget constraints, uh, you know, reasons, but uh, 
we don't want to bother you with details, but please check with your local civis office and your local civis contact person whether the European University you have in mind to, uh, you know, as a host university, has funds available to support your project. Uh, I can already tell you that, for instance, uh, Tübingen, but also Brussels, uh, Ex Marseille University. Uh, are among those who uh, can uh, invite uh, African partners, but also Glasgow and Lausanne, for instance. Uh, and in fact, for Glasgow and Lausanne, um, the budget is actually more substantial and it's also easier to use. So that this as a side uh, information. Uh, we also pay for organizational costs for meetings at a European civics university. So if you, you know, want to you know, invite people for, for a dinner uh, or hire a student assistant for organizing an event, uh, that's possible, although local rules may apply. You need would need to check with your local civics office uh, what exactly is possible here, but in general, organizational costs for meetings are uh, covered. We are talking about real costs only, although you will be asked to actually estimate uh, you know, travel budgets, uh, what is paid in the end are real costs. So we cannot uh, pay for you know, big lump sums here, um, but please also check with your local civics office and your local contact um, what's possible there. Uh, but real costs, that's the message. We talk about 10,000 euro maximum per, for each project. Um, when people from uh, Glasgow and O'Neill are traveling or people are traveling uh, to these places because they are invited by Glasgow and O'Neill, we can exceed this uh, limit uh, slightly. Again, please contact your local civics office for finding out how much yeah, uh, you can exceed this because that depends on certain factors. Uh, but sorry, one, one step back. Um, and uh, you might wonder you know, how many projects will be funded in the end. Uh, we estimate 13 to 15. Yeah, uh, uh, That, of course, depends on the... Uh, budget of the projects applied for, but that's roughly uh, our estimation of, of what we can uh, manage here with this call. Thank you. Next slide, please. Which kind of activities will be funded? Uh, one group of activities will be thematic, and that means that they need to have a research dimension, broadly defined, let's say, uh, that they have to relate to our civil sub-themes mentioned earlier, and they have a potential to establish a longer lasting collaboration. And we list here a few examples of what you can actually plan for workshops, training measures for early career researchers, you know, network meetings, fact finding missions, uh, you know, workshops for preparing uh, a publication, for instance, but also citizen science projects or, or inviting, for instance, staff to a research oriented summer winter school could also be something interesting. Uh, to plan for. But we also uh, want to support application design measures. And of course, you can imagine what this means. You can meet for, uh, you know, discussing the application. You can meet for actually getting to know each other as consortium members and uh, explore um, commonalities, etc. And of course, we want, uh, like you, to really plan then also for a joint application. But also, if you are a principal investigator, potential principal investigator, and need to travel to a few places now to to find out what's possible at these institutions, uh, this is call is also something for you. Perhaps. Thanks. Next slide. These are the eligibility criteria. Um, your proposal must involve at least three universities, and this includes African universities. But uh, for several reasons, also budget related, we ask you to have two European universities involved in this uh, group of universities at least. Yeah, so uh, the African university counts towards the minimum of three, um, but uh, this is the constellation, the minimum constellation, let's say. Uh, but of course, we would like to uh, see more. Uh, universities involved. It, as we have now indicated several times, it needs to relate to a civis hub theme. Um, and the, the more it targets towards these hub themes, the, the better it is, let's say, for your application. Yeah, but um, of course, you know, a loose relationship is also okay, you know, if one can really speak broadly to the hub topic. Yeah. 
Uh, but of course, a com in a comparative perspective, if uh, we have you know these to decide between projects, a, a project with has a stronger uh, focus on our hub themes uh, will get the better bonus, let's say, for this point. Um, of course, it has to be a thematic activity or application design measure, as described before. And really, we would like to see a, a activity plan uh, which has at its end date, end of July 2025. But we also would like to see certain features in proposals. Uh, these, if you don't, you know, match these features, then uh, this is still okay. But of course, if another proposal has these features, it will actually uh, probably be have better chances to be funded. We want to see more participants, of course, than just the three. And the more uh, partners you can involve in meaningful ways, of course, uh, the better it is. Uh, for your proposal and for the evaluation of your proposal. Um, but also interdisciplinarity as a key target in our civil subs is something the evaluators will look at. Uh, societal challenges um, should be addressed. Um, and if you have a thematic activity uh, and include citizen and part participatory science, this is also an advantage. Now, how does this translate? Next slide, please, into the evaluation of your proposal. So these criteria are mirrored here in these, let's say, uh, you know, criteria or dimensions the evaluators will look at. The number of civil universities involved uh, is weighted here with 10%, minimum three, the more uh, the better, yeah. But of course it has to be meaningful still. Um, the number of African partners universities involved is key. And, uh, you know, if you have, an African partner, it's already 10%. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have an African partner, you lose 10%, let's say. Yeah. Relevance for civil subs, and this includes also not only the topic, but also interdisciplinarity as a you know uh, nice to have uh, feature and the addressing of societal challenges. So if you really have interdisciplinary and social society challenges. Um, sorry, societal challenge orientation in your proposal, then uh, you, you know, are evaluated better here in this dimension. Uh, and the next uh, four or three, sorry, are academic quality standards, let's say, uh, which apply to every evaluation process in, in uh, this realm. Coherence of the proposal is something the evaluators will look at, i.e. how your objectives um, match your, your activity, um, whether um, you know you have a, yeah, a coherent proposal, also in terms of uh, realistic outcomes, etc. Yeah, so also refer to the um, application form for more details here. Scientific relevance is of course a key dimension here and, and weighted uh, with twenty five percent the most. Um, again here. Uh, your proposal, of course, should, should speak to um, scientific debates in your field, should uh, be uh, an innovative contribution, or original contribution at best. And uh, the more um, you can actually uh, achieve this, the better uh, your assessment here. The network composition, 10%, is your network you know, well composed? Uh, you know, do partners complement each other in their, um, in their profiles and the expertises. Um, this is something the evaluators will look at, but also sustainability. At the end, it's about seed funding is something uh, which is evaluated here with 20%. So uh, you need to make sure that you have an idea what you want to do with this activity. What should be really the, the activity after 2025, after July 2025? And of course, if you have an application design measure, this is easy. Yeah. So your uh, sustainability is in a way secured by saying, you know, we want to apply for this uh, third party funding um, program. Um, but if you have a thematic activity, also please, you know, elaborate on uh, follow up activities. Yeah, make up your mind, discuss with your partners what you really want to do uh, in the mid to long term perspective together and write it down here. Um, if you have a citizen science participatory research dimension, this is also a bonus here, uh, but in a comparative way. 
So if we have two projects which are actually equal in uh, in their assessment or in the evaluation, but one is has this component, we would actually rather give the funds to the citizen science participatory research uh, project. And at the end of the day, it also everything needs to be financially and organizationally fe feasible. And that means if you have an activity at the in July 2025, yeah, for instance, uh, which is very demanding, uh, this is probably not really feasible to conduct in the framework of this call. Yeah, so the management will look at uh, the financial and organizational aspects uh, of your activity, uh, but don't worry too much. Uh, it and use, let's say, your um, common sense. Yeah, for um, considering this dimension. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christian, for all this detail. And <clears throat> now we go through the real application. So we will see together uh, the call timeline. Uh, we will talk about the search, the partners, partnership uh, research, which is a big issue because as we saw in the in the Q and I bottom. Uh, and a lot of questions about this uh, partnership. And we will go through the application process and form. So to look together how to really proceed in the, in the application, how to fill the budget and some resources for you. So uh, just to make it once again clear, the call uh, will end. This deadline is the 31st of March, which means that you have uh, more than a month to prepare your application. By the 15th of May, uh, there will be three steps. Um, first of all, the UP Council will examine your uh, proposal for the academic aspect that uh, Christian just mentioned before. Then the Management Committee will check the financial organization feasibility uh, as he said, Christian, once again, what does it mean? It means that all the activity must be planned according to the call timeline. It means that by July 31st uh, of 2025 uh, must be ended. And at the end, the Research Council and the Steering Committee, they will uh, decide uh, whether, your pro whether your proposal is uh, fundable or not. And in a month time, the decision will, uh, will be notified to the applicants uh, with the, all the instruction, let's say, of the, of, the, um, of the funding procedure. And then you can start your activity. Uh, what about, uh, we thought that this could be a good occasion, great opportunity to networking and to as far as possible matchmaking, uh, facilitate your matchmaking in the partner of the search. So what we ask to do, uh, what, what do we ask to the potential applicants is to fill in a form that I will show you now here. So um, this one is be, will be, oh, do you have it on your, is it okay? Yes. Yeah. So this uh, this tool, uh, let's say that is something quite easy um, that can help all potential applicants to present himself. So to tell us from which university is coming from, uh, kind of detail uh, ID of who he is in, and especially about the. The, the proposal you want to submit. So the title, the thematic area, this which disciplinary disciplinary area and type of activity according to this call. So again, we you you will tell the community if it's a thematic or an application design measure. And the idea is to give you uh let's say room to describe what you're looking for in the partners research. So the idea is that once we will have uh, this form, uh, several of them, we can put them on the website. So to host somehow um, uh, a sharing platform with all this information so that eventually 
the, the researcher who are looking for partners uh, can get in contact with other potential partners. And this is a work uh, that we will do, uh, hopefully with this uh, website, uh, with this platform uh, on the website, either by through the CV staff, I mean, the local point, the institutional coordinator, myself and Christian, we will try to do our best to facilitate this um, connection among the academic community of CVs. Uh, getting into the day of the application itself, um, so you will be asked to go through the CVs application portal. So there is um, maybe some of them, some of you, sorry, already seen it, already checked for it. So you have um, full uh, application to fill in. And once again, what is very relevant of this document, once you will fill it, hope, sorry, uh, you, you go for the application I can Yes, this is the one. So once you will click, you will find, um, sorry, I get to it. You go here for the application. So you click on it and you will, I'm sorry, I have the wrong page. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I don't know why. But anyway, what I wanted to show you is that you once you will be in the um, application portal, uh, we did a um, Word document for you that you can download uh, to work on your application. So it's basically this the same uh, information that you will later on, once you have finished your proposal, uh, write online and submit it online. So this is, as you see, you can download it and work offline on your proposal, especially if it's a joint uh, proposal so that you might need to share with your colleagues. And once again, what is important, uh, as Christian said before, for the evaluation process, uh, what is really, really important is the this one, the project description, and the partner network, and of course, the sustainability. Uh, you have specifically 500 words maximum for the project description and 400 words for the partners network. So once again, uh, please remind that this Word document is not the real application. This is a just working offline document. So you will need to go to the portal and apply for the online version. Then uh, how you will fill the budget. So once again, when you are when you are in the application portal, you can download the budget template, uh, which must respect the European Erasmus uh, Plus rules. So as we said, there are uh, some constraints, some restriction for um, some partners. Uh, I put in the slide two samples just to mm, let you see uh, maybe what I will do here before. This, this one, sorry, I want you. This is the budget template that you can download. So as you can see, it's quite easy because we are talking about um, mainly travel costs and some uh, hosting activities like catering. So very easy to enter. And the way the budget is done, you can, for example, choose one of these. I don't know why he doesn't want this morning. Oh. Okay, doesn't want. Right. Doesn't matter. I'll show you in the slide. Yes. So basically, when you go for the here, there is the onglet, um, the window. You can choose one of the university of the CVS Alliance. 
and also the African partners. And according to who are, who is the partner, the template itself will tell you if this um, cost is available on this budget or not. This is a very, very uh, hypothetic um, example. Just to show you, for example, you want to have, you want to apply for a design measure because you're uh, aiming at uh, your consortium of uh, university. They want to later on work on an Horizon grant. So you are um, thinking of having um, a meeting of AMU, uh, Sapienza, and Stockholm, and Glasgow with three African partners. If your uh, meeting would be attended in Stockholm, as you can see, uh, the travel cost for the partners from African universities and Glasgow won't be covered by this budget. Uh, but indeed, the European, uh, the Marseille, uh, Rome, uh, and Stockholm uh, colleague, as well as the catering, will be uh, part of this budget. On the other hand, if you do the same activity, so uh, in Johannesburg, for example, once again, what is uh, about the travel cost for African colleagues and uh, Glasgow colleagues won't take, uh, won't, won't be considering this uh, funding, not either the activity in itself. So, which means that basically in the consortium, you need to look at the capacity of the partners uh, university. Uh, as we said, as Christian said, um, there are several civil university that have found uh, extra, so what we call for external fund, uh, available for these kind of activities. So for all uh, general inquiries, we, you have the email, seed funding that you have already in the website. We have already prepared a FAQs uh, page with some of the first question that we gather, and now we can go for the for the for, from your question from the floor uh, to try to answer the best uh, at them. And again, please uh, go and keep in contact with your local civis office. So I think Christian, if you do you agree, we can start to uh, look at the at the at the Q and I yeah button. We can do that. And um, one question which came up uh, several times now is the inclusion of postdocs or PhDs. And uh, it's not mandatory to include them. Yeah, But of course, in the spirit of this call, we encourage their inclusion uh, very much. And postdocs can also be applicants themselves. So uh, they can also be really a, a part of the uh, partner network. And um, another question um, was also, where can we find the word document? Um, it's actually provided on the website of the platform, of the application platform, which uh, Grazia has shown. Yes. Grazia, do you want to perhaps show I that, show yeah. show that yeah. once more so that people know yes. where it is? Yes, sir. Wait, I will do that um, here. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, another question is from Mina Afkir. Uh, the research project should be collaborative. Do applicants need to make contact with the universities that are involved in civis, or is there any other way of doing it? Um, and this is, of course, the, the big question, and which is also not the first one, but uh, several questions reached us before uh, on this point. Um, we have established now this partner search tool, which you could use for finding partners. And uh, Grazia has, has described it. Um, yeah. But of course, you can also directly um, now approach uh, colleagues, yeah, of whom you think they are, uh, you know, really good partners, potential partners, yeah. So don't be, don't feel restricted by this tool, yeah. So uh, of course, in in yeah, a collegial uh, 
discussion can also be the start for, for a joint application. But of course, there should be a, a, a prior contact, yeah, and there should be some arrangement and it should be really a joint application, yeah. If it's if you didn't uh, actually approach a potential partner before, uh, it's it's still possible, of course, to 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 reach out to that partner in the course of the activity. But please indicate that clearly in your project description that this is one of obje objective, for instance, yeah, um, to reach out to further partners. But your application should be really already established on on initial contacts, yeah. At least, you know, you should have agreed together that you want to jointly apply for this activity together. Yes, uh, just to Do you want to, want to continue, Grazia? Yeah, just just few things, uh, just to make sure that uh, everybody has understood about the application itself. Uh, once you will be in the portal, so it's a smartly, um, and here you have, as you can see, this here you can download the word that I showed you before, okay? As well as when you go through the document at one point, and oh no, it's not here. Normally you have here, I'm sorry, I don't I don't know why it, doesn't, it didn't open in mine, but here you have the budget template in the, in the, in the portal. And then I wanted to try to answer, um, there was a question about the date, the, the call timeline um either for the partners research uh, there was a question from mr molete how long would it approximately take to link the partners online uh, considering the deadline of 31st of march so what we want to do mr molete is actually to um a long lasting collaboration and also for us as civic staff to increase this uh, networking so hopefully this uh, form that uh, you are invited to fill in will become something more perennial, I would say, uh, that we can offer as a platform on the website. We are still working on it, as uh, you can imagine, is a, is a, is a big issue, uh, all of this uh, digital networking. But I think that what we will do for sure is that once that we have profile to be shared, this can can go also over the 31st of March. Am I right, Christian? Yes, well, the, the uh, of course, it, 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 it may sound ambitious now to find partners until 20, until 31st of March. But, uh, but as we said, um, you know, the application is not that demanding, we would assume, right? I mean, you are expected to contribute like 500 words here and, and 400 words there. Um, and if you have reached out to potential partners and have an initial maybe Zoom call or an email exchange, and if you really jointly agree that you want to go for it and, and really meet in person uh, with the seed funding provided here, then that's probably also enough, you know, a couple of weeks now uh, to go. And as Grazia has explained, um, if you start now to to share your 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 ideas uh, through this form, uh, the institutional contact network will support you and disseminate your uh, partner searches uh, to the targeted universities. So indeed, ambitious but still uh, manageable. We would we would say. But as I said, I mean, don't feel restricted to this uh, tool. Uh, just check out the personal websites uh, and the university websites of potential partners also, right? Um, then maybe you could go on uh, if one is retiring at, at the end of 2025, but will continue be, to be associated with the university as a research associate. Uh, this is fine. You know, institutional affiliation is what counts. Um, but sorry. Sorry, no, please correct, please, uh, apologies. Um, you need to be a staff member for receiving the funding. Um, and so as long as you are a staff member, you can make use of this seed funding, yeah? And you can be supported through the seed funding. Um, and after 2025, your institutional affiliation is of course decisive. If you still continue to be associated to your university, then that's fine, yeah? Then you can apply. So thumbs up for uh, this question uh, 
from Leslie Cowling. We can go on and can a scholar from African Civil University be a, a principal investigator? Um, as we said, the contact person and the main applicant, let's say, needs to be someone from a European university, but the activity itself uh, can, of course, be coordinated mainly also from um, a, an African scholar. Also, the follow-up activity, for instance, if you apply now for um, a application design measure and would like to use the grant for you know, bringing the writing team together uh, or a consortium, that follow-up grant proposal can have as principal investigator, of course, an African scholar. Yeah, So this is possible, but for the seed funding call itself, we would request um, a European university partner for organizational reasons. Um, what we could also do, Grazia, I'm, I'm hope I, uh, I hope I uh, am in line with you. Let's share the links to the partner search platform, um, also very soon, maybe even today, uh, or at least at the beginning of next week, so that you really have, of course, immediate access uh, to this tool, yeah, uh, which we presented here. Um, and as Grazia said, just to repeat it because it's important, it will also be on the call website, information on that and the link itself. What we can do is yep. for sure to send to to hold the participants the webinar mm -hmm. itself, I mean, the the slide. So in, yep. in the slide, yep. as you see here yep. uh, in this page, sorry, I just go back to it. Ah, here yeah so here you will click and you will go for this air table um form that we we ask you to um, the potential applicants are invited to fill in and mm -hmm. later on this this would be become somehow our uh database of of your profiles so that we can we will see uh, also, the I think that the um, let's say that the what it will become is I think is also uh, in coherence with what we'll receive. Mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> yeah. So and yeah, we go back to the again to the floor for the yeah. next. Uh, Opa, sorry. Ow! 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 The next question is from Katarina Tomu. What do you mean uh, that posters could be uh, applicants? Yes. Um, uh, indeed, they can be. You know, if the, the partner network agrees that the postdoc is is the main applicant, uh, that's fine. And the postdoc can, of course, be also just a normal partner uh, in the little uh, consortium, yeah, which applies for the seed funding. So postdocs are full and equal uh, partners here in the context of this call. Um, next question. Maybe this is, is important to re-stress yep. that only European partners allowed to open a submission session on the portal. No, I mean, the yeah, basically, yes, because it's the coordinator. So as we said, we are on a European um, Erasmus Plus scheme, funding scheme. So the main coordinator and the leader, let's say, of this consortia, uh, of course, would be one of the um, European universities. So it... yeah, but it's yeah leader, main contact person. You know, it's it doesn't have to be uh, really a strong leader here. Um, and uh, how you organize yourself internally in the little group is is uh, your decision. Um, we just need to have one person at our institutions because. It's difficult to organize, uh, you know, the seed funding mechanism in the end um, with a partner in Africa. That's the only reason why we we have to do it like that. Yeah, is a very is a procedure, let's yeah. say. And so, but so I, I I wanted to say bye to Professor Chris, but so he left. Okay. And um, if one of our partners starts in Sapensia in September, can she still count as one of the partners? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, um, if if if, yes. if the activity and the funding comes after her hiring, after she has taken up a position, yes, of course, yeah, that's uh, the, that's the the formal condition. The supported person needs to be a staff member when the activity takes place, when the mobility takes place. Yeah, uh, is there is a list of available partner professors, or are we supposed to search for them ourselves? But once again, um, I don't think that we we have a full list of all the <laughs> 17 university uh, professors would be very extensive. So what we can do is invite you, um, there is no name in this question, so whoever, uh, to fill in in your partner search form this specific question, maybe. Uh, there is a room for that. And once again, get in contact with the uh, local uh, civis um, uh, contact. Sorry, of your of your university, because I think that we are talking about different um, domain uh, topics. So we might refer this this inquiry to the ops uh, for the the specificity of your research of your proposal. I mean, I hope that we, was clear. If, well, if the thing is, the the, the tool, um, the the tools is, is your for your support. I mean, in the end, you are responsible. It's your network. There's no guarantee that the search will uh, lead to an outcome and will lead to a consortium, and. Um, we will forward when 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 Grazia and and the team will receive um, an entry in the form. Um, we will also see which boxes you ticked in terms of targeted universities. If you are open, yeah, we will actually forward your call uh, to to all the universities. But if you say, well, we are actually looking for uh, specific partners in at Wits or UCAT or Sfax, for instance, yeah, then you can tick the boxes and we'd only send it to our colleagues there and they would then forward your partner profile, your partner uh, search um, form uh, to potential partners in their universities. But whether those partners then react and, and come to you yeah, and respond to your search, that's up to them, and that's maybe also up to your idea. And we encourage you to be as precise and as clear as possible on your idea and also on the profile of a, a potential partner. The more you provide in this regard and the clearer it gets, uh, the higher the chances, we would say, for responses, for positive responses to such a partner search. Yeah, If, you do, if it's just a one line, you know, I look for collaboration in this or that field, that might not be enough to co to convince people and to uh, attract interest uh, for your idea. Yeah. And but what you could also do is, uh, you know, look for partners through research gauge. Yeah. Uh, look at university websites uh, in the search field of university websites. Uh, it will you know turn out immediately a number of academics um, Maybe working in your field. Yeah. So maybe don't trust only our uh, support here, but uh, uh, become active yourself. Um, so, I think that this all, we, we have, uh, we've, uh, we, re, we answered to all of them. Uh, yeah, uh, well. yeah, indeed. Um, one, we, maybe one add on because I see this call. Uh, the tool so far is only for this call. Um, whether we will make use of it also in other activities and other calls in CIVIS remains to be seen. Currently, it's uh, for this call only, yeah. But we want to also give it a try and test it. Yeah. Um. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think an important question comes from an anonymous, anonymous viewer. Um, of course, it works also the other way around. Yeah. Um, as soon as we have entries to it in this form, um, there will be also a link on the call website through which you can see what uh, others have proposed. Yeah. So this is not only about uh, us disseminating your partner searches, 
but also you can actively you know go to uh, the website where all these partner searches uh, will be displayed yeah. so you can also just you know look what others are doing and of course then contact them also in that way yeah yeah also i mean Gratia, I, i'll just see here you you just intervene Gratia, right um also the recording will be made available afterwards yeah through a link uh, okay, so thank you, everybody, and uh... the the um, one question is sorry. I think we can we will manage actually to answer every question um, in just a half a minute. Agatha, do we have the time still? Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Um, do we need an extensive proposal before we accept it in the program? Um, we would say that the expectation is not so high in terms of an extensive proposal, but it should be a good proposal and a, a proposal to the point. Yeah, uh, you have 500 uh, you know words for describing your project, including including objectives, etc. So, uh, you know, try to be as precise as possible uh, with these uh, categories, uh, which we are. Uh, ask you to uh, elaborate on in your project description yeah. and the data provided will not be shared publicly um, a question from anna uh, i think this refers to the um uh, i think this refers to the um uh, online search tool in fact uh, you, people who actually fill in the form agree that their data uh, will be made available also on the website. Yeah. So um, indeed, uh, it will be publicly available. But we are talking here about the project idea, the name, um, and an email address here. Yeah. Um, so it's not sensitive data. Where we would say we share through this website. And of course, it's the, the target group for this call is the civics community. We will not now, you know, make it public. Uh, through civis media channels, this link. Yeah. So although it's formally publicly available, um, we will you know, target the civis academic community with this, and of course, thereby, you know, the group which with access to this data will be restricted to this community effectively. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think you know what we could do. Sorry, Gata. Is you know any remaining question? Uh, we can uh, put into our question and answer form yes. and um, and of course Grazia uh, will also answer any questions uh, coming in through the try uh, email yes. address. Yeah. Thank you very much to everybody and thank you Jean-Marc uh, for your availability and thank you Christian. Bye. Bye bye. And uh, good luck. Yep. Good luck.